Joining me right now is the KSW heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Phil DeFreeze, who is set for action on December 19th, KSW 57, set to defend his belt. How's it going, Phil? How are things leading into that big fight? Oh, oh going great. My uh, preparation's been good. Uh, I'm about to stay home this time. I've still had a great camp. I'm feeling fit, feeling big, feeling strong. You know, I'm going to put some fireworks on. And, uh, you know, you've defended it a few times now. You seem to have hit a real sort of sweet spot in your career. Obviously, you had that that long unbeaten run heading into the UFC and uh, had a bit of a patchy run through the midpoint of your career. But now you seem to have just, you just seem to have hit this great run of form right now. What's What's been the secret to finding that consistency at the top level and having having the consistent performances that you're having at the highest level now? Well, I, I, I had a severe mental health problems in my entire career uh, since birth. I've always uh, suffered from like chronic anxiety. I was kind of raised with anxiety, like like I got kind of got instilled with like rational fears and everything. You know, they'd be like me dad, be like, "Oh, this lot would do. You do this, you'll go to jail. Uh, or if you do this, and uh, people will come and beat you up." Like, I'd like irrational fears of like the slightest things leading to like terrible consequences, which is which isn't how life is, you know. But uh, about but both I've had a uh, I got cut from the UFC and I had a bad loss. I kind of hit the drink and stuff and. Uh, I had like a bit of a mental breakdown, so I decided to like kind of address my mental health issues, and I didn't even know what anxiety was and, uh, until like if you if you said like, like I would like say oh anxiety man up you know like what's anxiety it's all in your head but I, I was suffering from it so badly and uh, I saw a therapist and I got some on pills for, for this anxiety you know and ever since I, I haven't lost a fight since you know it was like. Uh, backstage I used to have this like unbelievable fear you know and then uh, like now. With the medication and the the feathers and stuff, like it's like it's like I'm like this is great. I'm like, I can enjoy myself here now, you know. Awesome, awesome, and uh, obviously, you know, we're we're heading into this fight. I know fight can can kind of be a bit a bit samey. You go through the same sort of stuff. You're preparing for different opponents, but this is all a little bit. You know, the world is a very different place to where it was the last time you fought back in, in September last year. So, I mean, how have you adapted to sort of getting prepared for a fight? during a pandemic and how, how how tough has it been to get quality training in during this time well well luckily professional athletes can still 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 train you know you still got your right to work so uh, and i've got like some very good heavyweights at my gym just had a, like, a heavyweight join last year called mick parker it's great to expect big things from them and there's a lot of good guys there now you know so my, my training camp's been great you know i like uh i didn't go to top team this time so i didn't know what the thing was with the visas and stuff and I didn't know if you could get stuck there, or whatever, you know, the election stuff, the uncertainty. But uh, it hasn't affected my training. I'm just, I'm just trying to get all my life as best I can and as normally as I can, you know. Yeah, and uh, you got Michael Keita on uh, on, on the teeth. He got a big win over the guy I think that you beat to win the belt, uh, Mikko Andrzejczyk. Uh, like, yeah. what, do you make, what do you make of him as an opponent? And uh, where where is he going to carry the most threat to you uh, on fight night on December 19th? Oh, he's great. He's a he's a like a very methodical striker, you know. He like kind of doesn't put a lot of out, like, output there, but what he does is quite smart work. But uh, I feel like I'm better all over, you know. And like uh, I, I'm going to this camp in incredible shape, you know. I think like uh, the athleticism. Well, I don't think you have to deal with it, you know. And especially with uh, my offensive wrestling, I don't, I don't think I have a counter to it. And uh, in terms of the in terms of the events themselves, you know, you've. As, as, as we mentioned earlier, you fought in the UFC. You've obviously come up through through the domestic scene, but you fought all across Europe in, in lots of big shows. As a fighter, explain to me just what kind of scale KSW hold their events at. I mean, it's well known across the MMA world that KSW put on some of the some of the most spectacular shows. How is it from a fighter's perspective? Doing the big, the oh, big great, uh, like, uh, uh, start and everything. The athlete and uh, the size of the events and the, the scope of it—it's unbelievable. You know, and they really put a lot into building you and uh, putting good promotional videos on. That it's, it's fantastic. You know, the crowd, the the, the, the crowd get hyped. It's uh, it's like nothing. It's like it's like uh, I mean, UFC might get more views on the, on, the, on the TV and stuff, but these these events are like like fantastic. I mean, the, the next fight is studio show. So, uh, I'm sure they'll still put a lot of, into the production. But uh, I'll, I'll miss I'll miss the big crowd and the big 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 deal. You know the make of it. Yeah how how much of a how much of a change is it be you know from fighting in a in an arena packed with like ten fifteen twenty thousand fans as they often have for these KSW shows to being in almost like a studio setting with maybe less than a hundred people in the room. Um, it's going to be a very different experience for you, right? 
Yeah, but I won't let it phase me. You know, I, I do a lot of visualization before a fight. I'd like, I'll run through what will happen. I'll run through, like, uh, I'll imagine what the sucks. The punches, when you're watching these shows, the, the punches sound they sound cracking. They're like, thud, thud. So I imagine that. Imagine, like, the no crowd and stuff. And uh, I won't let it phase me, you know. But once that door's locked, I don't even know there's a crowd there anymore, you know. Yeah, and uh, in terms of the matchup itself with, with, with Keita, I mean, Break it down for us. I mean, you're obviously known as a as a submission specialist and you've got a lot of wins by submission. Is that your best path to victory in this one? How do you see that fight playing out stylistically, do you think? Uh, I, well, it's wrestling. It's, it's wrestling where I, I, I beat the guys, you know. I end up on time when I punch them, when I punch them and they can't stop us. So uh, my ground and pound will set up a, a submission, but I, I don't really go for submissions, but I try to just kind of punch people enough that they kind of give me them, you know. But uh, the PPO is submission of the first three, I think. But I, I always say that, you know. <laughs> and uh, how does 2021 look for Phil de Freeze? If you get past this one and you get the result you want from this one, obviously the world is not that easy to predict right now whether we're going to have uh, open events anymore in the next six months to a year. But assuming that most things are possible and you can still get the same amount of fights in that you would normally want, how do you want your 2021 to go? Oh, well, I've, I've, I've had a year off, basically. This year, I haven't fought for over a year. So I want to play catch-up now. Hopefully, I can do three fights next year. And uh, big fights, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. But I want, I want to be active. And I want to, I want to make a few a bit of money next year, you know, make up. <laughs> Absolutely. One thing I did need to ask you, obviously, I sort of touched upon it briefly before we hit record here. Going through your career and obviously checking out all your stats, ended up on your Wikipedia page. And uh, there's some interesting information about you on the Wikipedia page. I didn't know whether it was someone playing a joke or what it was. Let me just read you what it says. It says, fight rituals. Yeah. It says, <laughs> known as the eccentric person, one of his most famous pre-fight rituals is he has to eat a large haddock and chips with mushy peas and a tin of ginger ale on Cleethorpe's pier during fight week. How much of this is true, Bill? Uh, no, I do. I, do. I, I, I probably will have fish and chips on fight week, but I don't know. But I don't, I've never been to Cleethorpe's pier in my life. But... Uh, I do, I do think it's quite funny. I do, I do have some pre-fight rituals that are quite funny as well, you know. Which, which, which <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not really PC, you know. So I'll leave them out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, in terms of, in terms of, you know, the heavyweight title and that moment when you picked up the belt, you claim that belt. It's, it's uh, a huge one's career to become a champion, but to get it done in Poland and then to come back to England and to defend it on home soil. How much did that mean to actually not just win the, but come home and defend it on home soil like you did? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, uh, when I, when I won the belt, I was like, I was four to one underdog, you know, nobody thought I was going to do it. And I came an underdog against the bed off as well, but uh, it was fantastic, you know, and like uh, every, every time I win, I, I'm growing in confidence now, you know, I feel invincible at the moment. Also, uh, December 19th will be the next one. Kaya. KSW57 in Łódź, Poland, looking to make it four defences in a row. Thanks so much for joining us and best of luck on Fight Night. Oh, amazing. Thank you for having me, mate.